Curtis Calhoun here with MMA News, and today I am joined by the second-ranked Bellator light heavyweight contender, Phil Davis, who's getting ready to face Julius Angliscus in the Bellator 276 co-headliner on March 12th. Phil, how are you? I'm doing well. How about yourself? Doing great. Uh, first things first, uh, what's the energy been like in camp, and uh, how excited are you ahead of this one? Uh, the energy in camp has been uh, has been good, man. Um, the name of the game is uh, stay healthy and train hard, and uh, I've been able to to, to be a hundred percent and um, just just training, man. It's it's difficult at times. Yeah, definitely. And uh, let's talk a little bit about Julius Angliscus. Obviously, a really tough guy who uh, lost on short notice to Vadim Nemkov. Uh, what are your thoughts on his skill set, and what do you know about him? Um, he's a tough guy. He's tough all the way around. You know, he's, uh, um, you know, good striker, uh, good grappler, um, tough guy, to all, all around tough kid. Um, there's nothing that really stands out that I'm like, oh, yeah, I'm definitely going to beat him here. He's just, he's just good, you know? And so, uh, you know, that's one of those things where you have to really get in there with the guy and mix it up for, with him. Uh, yourself to even know what you got to do. Yeah, definitely. And uh, who's going to be quartering you for this fight? So this fight, I will be uh, cornered by Adrian Melendrez, Nicholas Piedmont, and Marcus McClure. Awesome, man. And uh, I remember last time you and I talked, it was uh, just before your last fight against uh, Yoel Romero. Looking back on that one, did the fight play out how you expected it, or did Romero surprise you by how he looked at light heavyweight? Uh, you know, he... I think he, I think he, uh, he did a good job of filling out a, you know, a, a light heavyweight frame. Um, it, it still it still has a few challenges just being in a different weight class. So I think he did a great job. And, um, I, you know, I, I truthfully, I don't script fights in my head. Like, this is what I'm going to hit him with. And, you know, that sort of deal. Um, I just let the chips fall where they may. And I'm glad I did. Because he is the type of turkey that will mix you up. You know, you watch tape and you watch some things. And this is what, kind of what you expect. And he comes out and does something completely different. So, uh, you know... I, I didn't really expect uh, the fight to go this way or that way, and uh, it's a good thing because he he's a, a master of trickery. Definitely. And uh, what are some of the differences between game planning for a guy uh, like Julius Ingliscus, who's uh, well balanced and and good, as you mentioned, in every facet, versus a guy like Yoel Romero, who's a little bit more unpredictable? Um. Well, you know, uh, you know, how do you, in terms of preparation, I mean, uh, yeah, you know, it, it's like, uh, you know, it's, it's about the same. <laughs> yeah. It's about the same. Uh, nothing, nothing, nothing changes really in preparation, but uh, I think just in practice, you know, uh, Julius isn't going to, you know, he's he's going to come with, uh, you know, he's not going to come at me with anything crazy. It's just, you know, your bread and butter, your ones and twos techniques that are proven that will work for him time and time again. I gotcha. And uh, obviously a big matchup coming up in the light heavyweight Grand Prix, uh, Vadim Nemkov versus Corey Anderson. How do you see that playing out? Um, you know what? I don't know. The more I the more I think about it, I'm like, man, I don't know. Corey Anderson is look he's on a tear, man. He's he is uh he's looking terribly good in everything he's uh been doing lately. So, you know, it's hard to it's hard to it's hard to, you know, say that he won't do great. I mean um yeah, but Nemkov's also been looking good. I, I don't I don't know. I'm 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 the one wrong one to ask, you know, I'm I'm biased in all of this. So yeah, I totally understand. And um, you mentioned a little bit about Corey Anderson. Uh, have you been surprised by how well he's looked uh, switching promotions and, and getting into a different division? How surprised have you been, uh, especially off of his knockout of uh, Ryan Bader? Um, you know, 
it, it, you know, I thought he, I thought he looked really great. Um, I thought he looked really great in that fight, and I, I also think, man, I just really wanted to see the fight play out a little bit further. Mm-hmm. You know, it's I, I'm not really sure. I'm like, man, like, I, I, I really wish I, I feel like, you know, and, and, and all because Corey Anderson stopped the fight short, which he is supposed to do every time. Mm-hmm. Um, I just really wish I got to see more and, and got, give, you know, I, I think Ryan Bader really didn't give, get, get a full go. He didn't get a, <laughs> I was like, I mean, that's, that's a mulligan. You know, you know what I mean? Just, just run that back. You know, I just, I need to see more. Yeah, uh, definitely. And, so, uh, uh, no, go ahead. No, I, it, it's hard to say exactly how, how well he did. He just freaking toasted him before any, before, you know, before you knew it. Yeah, definitely. And, uh, a guy that you fought back in, uh, 2014 Glover to is now the, uh, UFC light heavyweight champ. What are your thoughts on him holding that title? And, uh, how surprised are you that he was able to get that title, uh, this late in his career? Uh, I don't know how surprised I am, but, uh, I'm definitely very proud of, him. um, you know, these are the accolades you, you, you hope for at any point in your career and to have them this late in the game. Uh, I am definitely as a fighter, but also uh, as a fan of Glover to share, you know, I'm proud of the dude. Absolutely. And, uh, last question for me, what's the key to getting the win next weekend and, uh, what can fans expect from you in the, in this fight? Uh, yeah, so the key to getting a win is just to be first and to uh, to be dominant in everything I do. You know, look to mix it up early and uh, just kind of stay on top of them. Awesome, man. And uh, last thing before we go, I'll give you the final word to uh, shout out any sponsors you have and uh, let the fans know where they can find you on social media. Yeah. Um, so big shout out to uh, Monster Energy. Um, uh Always hold me down. Uh, Monster's just been uh, a great sponsor. Uh, Lactigo, Sports Performance Gel, um, Oak Grove Technology, um, uh, Go Ministry, and, um, and they, I think that's all for right now. But, uh, yeah, you can also find me uh, at Phil Mr. Wonderful uh, on Twitter. You can find me at uh, PhilMRW on Instagram. Awesome, man. Well, Phil, uh, thanks again for your time. Always great catching up, and uh, I'm sure we'll chat again soon. Thank you so much. Thank you.